Yes, the obvious that demagogues thrive on the emotional pull that they have over us. Well, um, the, I mean, the obvious element is they're not they're not ap appealing to us through reason. Right. Right. So in, in the Laws of Human Nature, I have a chapter on irrationality. It's chapter one. And I talk that we humans have certain irrational biases built into our brains. Mm -hmm. And one of them, obviously, is the confirmation bias that everyone knows about. But I talk about the conviction bias, which is if somebody talks with so much conviction, so much anger, so much emotion, so much righteousness, we tend to think that there's something real about it. They wouldn't be faking these emotions. Therefore, there must be something true to what they say. And this is what makes people on television multimillionaires. The angrier they appear, the more truthful they must be and the more audience people will reach because we have a propensity to want to have our emotions stirred, to want somebody who appeals to them, and we want to believe someone who kind of spews the anger that we're not necessarily comfortable with expressing, right? That's a good so, point. Yeah, we see this on the extreme left and the extreme right yeah. on television because yeah. then those shows where they're yelling at each other and that's all they're doing, or someone says, can you believe these idiots are doing this and this and this, and it's just a bunch of people at home going, yeah, I hate that. Yeah. They're the worst. Yeah. I mean, the person I think who really does that is like Tucker Carlson. Yeah. I'm not going to, you know, go political here on you mm -hmm. because there are people on the left who do it as well. There are, for sure. yeah, to be fair. You know, Chris Cuomo can be a little bit like that. Mm -hmm. But Tucker Carlson, yeah, it's like his snark, his disdain, his anger, his vitriol is what people love. That's what makes them tune in. Yeah. And they assume that he must be telling the truth because there's so much conviction behind it. So as opposed to a professor who gets up there in a very calm demeanor and sort of explains what's really going on in the world, we're going, uh, what an egghead, <laughs> you know? You know, he's got some axe to grind because he went to Harvard or something. Yeah, right? he's an elitist. He's an elitist, yeah. exactly, thank you. Okay, so we are wired to have our emotions appeal to us. It's part of our nature because we're at heart emotional animals, right? We, um, emotions, uh, to give you a very brief physiological lesson, when you feel an emotion like anger or frustration or excitement, hormones are really chemicals are released into your bloodstream that are very powerful whereas the pre the the cortex the frontal cortex where your thinking goes on those are like little electrical impulses that are not nearly as strong as those hormones that are charging through you making your adrenaline pump right yeah i rarely so, get fired up about like logic math problems or something like that it would never right. get me sort of charged up right. having to do my math homework instead of watching a movie or, or a show that I wanted to, right? that triggers that cortisol or whatever it is, adrenaline reaction. So by nature, we're wired to pay attention to our emotions, whereas our thoughts, yeah, we kind of listen to them, but when we feel something, it, it engages so much of our body physically that we're, um, we have to pay attention to it. 